And welcome to Vandemonium. We are glad you're here. Steve DeVal from Thor Motor Coach, along with John Kreider, Vice President of Product Development. John, we got a lot of people who want to know about our B-Van products today. And Steve, why wouldn't you want to know them? They're about the hottest thing on the market right now. I'll tell you what, they are awesome. They have a lot of great features, a lot of great functionality. We believe that it is the best B-Van on the market for the money right now. And before we get into uh, taking your questions and throughout the morning or afternoon or wherever you are from watching, I know Thomas is watching from California, so it's 9 a.m. there. We encourage you to go to the Ask a Question tab and ask all your questions also over here in the chat. And at one point, we will disable the chat. Not now, though. Um, and you can hit the plus sign and you can ask a question there. And this way, uh, when we get through a little presentation, we are going to go ahead and start fielding your questions. One of the neat things you can do, too, is you may have a similar question of somebody else. You can go ahead and vote for that question. And it kind of moves it up in the queue. And the most popular questions will kind of run down the list there. And we'll try to get as many questions answered as you can. So we're going to go ahead and start. And uh, as we do, there's a little slide. So I'm going to go ahead and take that full screen while we talk. Um, John, you were you were instrumental in getting and developing the sequence and the Talara products to market. So let's talk about what it took on your end and from Four Motor Coach to take these great products and get them out to market. Uh, well, you know, Steve, uh, one of the things that we looked at uh, about three years ago, we started looking at this B-Van market. Uh, and of course, you know, we've had a lot of success as far as the Sprinter Class C business goes. But we knew that there are consumers out there because we talked to them at shows. We talked to them um, on our Facebook and our social media pages. We talked to them, uh, you know, through email um, that said that the, the B plus or the Class C was great, but they just want something smaller. They want the whole entire van experience. They want the metal walls and doors and windows and everything that the chassis provides. And so we started looking at that. And uh, you know, it was a, it was one of those things where the market wasn't real big. So we were trying to figure out what resources and what some of our opportunity costs were um, to get into the market. And uh, about the time where we were kind of making the decision of go no go, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, there was somebody um, road trek obviously that um, stopped being in the market, and so it kind of gave us an opportunity to get into the market. So that's what we did. We uh, came out with the uh, Talaro and the sequence. The sequence was our first entry into the market. We, we showed that at the RVX show that was about a year and a half ago um, as kind of a concept vehicle as a what if. What if we tried this? What if we went into the market? What would dealers think and what would retail consumers think? And, uh, and of course, that was then and uh, now we've been producing product uh, for five, six months uh, and we've had a really good um, reception as far as the product goes because it's hitting some uh, features, it's hitting some price points, it's hitting some uh, things that were maybe missing in the market or there just wasn't enough selection in the market. So here we are today. And let's talk about uh, as we get into our presentation here, we have some uh, some information that will go ahead and show up here. It, one of the things that I, I think that really sets the sequence in the Talar um, uh, apart in the market are some of the materials, some of the features, some of the uh, amenities that we use. I mean, you went to Italy to help pick out the the cabinetry we did yeah so i mean uh we tried to look at what was out there in the market what we could source in the united states and what we had to source um you know from um overseas uh this happened a long time before thor industries decided to purchase the heimer group so this really had nothing to do um at thor uh, within thor industries we're all independent companies so we all compete against each other so uh, while heimer is now part of the thor industries family um, we compete against them in the market just like they do us. Mm -hmm. And of course, if anybody's been watching, you know, what Thor Industries has been saying, uh, we know that the, the Heimer Group is planning on coming to North America uh, sometime in the next year. Um, and they will be uh, a competitor with us just like, uh, you know, Winnebago mm -hmm. might be. Um, but when we looked at it, we, we thought there was a few things that it needed. We thought there were things that we could do a little bit better than maybe what was available in the market. And we heard from people that they, they wanted some choices. Um, you know, one of the things they get started with that most people ask is, okay, what's the difference between the sequence and the Talaro? Right. Um, what it really comes down to is the look and the feel on the inside of the coach mm -hmm. is the difference in the vans. So they're going to share floor plans. Um, they're going to share components as far as, you know, the way that the coach operates, the components that are inside. But what's going to be different, it's going to be the look and the feel. And so our designer has gone out and specifically tried to make things different. So the cabinets aren't all exactly the same. The countertops aren't the same. Some of the fabrics are not the same. 
Um, obviously, the 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 um, wood um, mm -hmm. as far as the cabinet doors and all that they're not the same. So that's really the difference. So as people are out there maybe asking, okay, what is the difference? That's really it. It's the it's the interior, the look and the feel inside of the vehicle. Um, the floor plans are going to share the um, the options that are available or standard on each one of the vehicles uh, is going to share. Uh, and this is what we call sister products because um, some of the products, um, depending on what market it's going into, some dealers like uh, one brand versus the other, some people like this versus that. So we give some variety not only to consumers, but also to our dealer body. And and let's talk about the similarities. We'll go back, Tom, to the beginning of the slideshow. They are both built on a Ram ProMaster uh, 3500 XT chassis with the V6 engine. So let's Correct. talk about how they're built and why we chose the window van over the cargo van, if you will. Well, and that really was one of the big things. I mean, one of the things that we talked about, and Mike Snell, who's our national sales manager, you know, he was pretty instrumental in helping us get um, the right van platform. And one of the things that we heard consistently was the um, the ProMaster is something that people like. I mean, let's face it, in the United States and Canada, we have relatively low gas prices. Um, mm -hmm. Diesel comes at a premium. Uh, gas doesn't require any DEF fluid. Um, the ProMaster is a really cool chassis because it's front wheel drive, which means you have no drivetrain components from the front of the coach to the back, which really gives you the opportunity to figure out where you're going to put holding tanks, where you're going to put the generator, where you're going to put all the things underneath the vehicle. So we thought that was the first the first opportunity to get into the market. And obviously that is um, what we're gonna call the, the, the most cost conscious platform to get into the, the market. Um, and so the V6, uh, it's proven, you know, it's a Fiat Ducato everywhere else in the world, except for America. So the Fiat Ducato has been out there. There's thousands and thousands of motorhomes built on that chassis. Um, it's got a good track record. It's got good warranty support. Um, it does a whole, whole lot of things um, that we thought was important. It was also important too because when you look at the ProMaster versus the Mercedes, um, mm -hmm. there's no doubt that the market is split about 50-50. And we just thought that uh, we could um, give more value for the dollar starting with the ProMaster. And a couple other things about the ProMaster is uh, we have both spent some time behind the wheel and actually Sharon, who is commenting in our chat, says it's uh, great. You can do a U-turn in an RV and it's easy to drive. It's very maneuverable. You have that uh, 36 foot turning radius. And that's another thing I think that is great about just the way that this chassis drives and handles. I, I, I just don't think you can beat it. You got a 3,500 pound hitch out back. It's really just a very, very useful vehicle, whether or not you want to uh, just get away for uh, a week or you just want to run to your kids' events. I mean, it's a great, great vehicle for a lot of purposes. Well, if you see in the background, if you're watching the video in the background, you can see we have a bunch of footage um, from when there's snow. Yeah. So um, the first time we really had this vehicle available um, was uh, a year ago, more or less in mm -hmm. March. Uh, and you and I and Steve um, had three vehicles. We had a van, we yeah. had a big diesel, uh, a Tuscany, and then we had an Ace Class A. And mm -hmm. some of these driving shots, um, we pulled into a couple of parking lots at some ski resorts to do some photography. And um, I got the Ace stuck. We got the Tuscany stuck. Um, <laughs> we couldn't get out. We couldn't get turned around. Yeah. Uh, the van flew through everything. And eventually we got to the point where um, we didn't even bother taking some of the bigger vehicles off the road. We just left them on the side of the road. And then we would travel in the ProMaster chassis because it would go through the snow without any problem with that front wheel drive setup. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing chassis to drive. Tom, take us to the next slide after the ProMaster. And as you do that, I will uh, let people know who are commenting in the chat right now. Uh, we do have questions coming in. At the bottom, you'll see a tab called Ask a Question. Go ahead, put your questions in there. We're going to run through a couple of slides here with some info. We'll get to your questions. You can also take and click on the plus sign on the chat column here, and you can ask a question there. So let's talk about uh, some of the things we've done on the outside that sets our Talar and Sequence apart is the... Uh, way that we outfit the top. We have a lot of Thule accessories. So go ahead and let's run down the list and what made you decide in the team to choose these specific items that we have on our products. Uh, you know, I think name brand was one of the big things. I think as we're looking at this market, um, I think there are um, certain aspects of uh, camping gear, uh, especially for people that are new to the business um, or they're just looking for the first time that they can relate to. And so um, Thule, um, which, uh, you know, you can go to an REI store, you can go to Camping World, you can go to um, a uh, Cabela's, a Bass Pro Shop, wherever. 
Uh, that's a brand that people recognize and know, and they recognize them. Uh, you know, they're a Swedish company. They have good products. Um, you might have a bike rack on the back of your car. You might have a, a roof rack or a, uh, you know, a, a pod up on the top of your car that you would use to take your skis to the ski resort. So it made some sense to partner with them, uh, and and they build really good products. So that's one of the things. Uh, WineGuard, you know, WineGuard is the is the biggest name as far as antennas, satellite dishes, anything in the RV business. Uh, but their business isn't just in RV. I mean, they have all kinds of applications, satellite applications, everything else. And um, we knew that with a vehicle like this, because it would be multi-purpose, uh, that we probably needed to offer something that gave you Wi-Fi capability if you were close to, uh, to a place that has it. And if not, you wanted 4G. So that way you can you can access whatever you want whenever you want. It doesn't matter if you're trying to stream uh, Netflix or Hulu, uh, or if you're just trying to check email. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You've got that accessibility, and, and of course, the system uses uh, the AT and T network. Uh, but there are opportunities that you can unlock it, and you can use uh, Verizon. Um, and uh, even though it's uh, it's not uh, agreed to or signed off on yet, uh, I believe that very soon um, you're going to be able to use T-Mobile or um, uh, Sprint or whoever else. Um, okay. You know, solar. Uh, obviously, solar. This is a small vehicle. Uh, you know, you want something that's going to charge the batteries when you're not there. So. Solar 190 watt panel is the standard, uh, and then if you um, have a floor plan like the 20AT or the 20A, which has the pop top, we actually uh, have a couple of flexible panels that increase the overall wattage by 10 up to 200. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know uh, a rack across the top where uh, if you do have kayaks, you do have a pod, you want to take it. Yeah, you're going to cover up the the solar panel, uh, but that might just be for a short trip, and then you can uh, take that off and have your solar panel back. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know a fantastic fan and um, a Coleman roof air conditioner, uh, which is a low amp draw as far as the air conditioner goes at only about uh, eight to 10 amps. So uh, pretty power efficient sipping electricity. All right, and uh, there we go. We have more information on the WineGuard Connect. It's your TV antenna, it's your radio antenna. It's really a great addition because people are using, and one of the things I've read is when people are going out looking for a campground, one of the main things they look for is Wi-Fi. If the camp has Wi-Fi, the nice thing about this is you can pull in a signal from up to a mile away and create your own safe, secure internet connection. So it's really a way for people who want to get away but still stay connected. Well, it's a one spot too. So you can connect everything you've got in your coach, whether you, you add a Roku or an Apple TV or anything else, you can connect it to the WineGuard uh, Connect and then that will connect to the Wi-Fi network. So now you don't have to connect your, you know, your tablet and your phone and everything else every time you don't have 14 different connections you have wine guard connecting one time and that's pushing everything down all right take us to the next slide tom we got so much to cover today we've talked about uh, solar so how does this uh is this, this a trickle charger uh you have the 30 amp kind of explain how the system works and how you have it tied in yeah so i mean it's a, it's a uh it's 190 watts which uh, when that really breaks down that's eight to nine amps uh, that it would be charging um, you can see we have a 30 amp charger, uh, I believe it is, uh, and that's kind of on the picture there to the uh, to the right, uh, and that's going to be right at your doorway, and that is going to tell you exactly uh, what kind of charge your batteries have, and then also what kind of um, input you're getting to the batteries. Um, we're running more or less a 10 gauge um, cable from the roof down to the controller, from the controller then to the batteries, uh, and it's plug and play. So if you wanted to add another um, solar charger. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a couple of Y connectors and it's MC4 connectors. There's nothing um, that is uh, proprietary or anything. So uh, you could go on Amazon and uh, get pretty much any brand of, uh, of uh, solar panel and add it to you. So if you want to go from 190 to, let's say, 300, uh, it, it's all set up to do that. All right. And I just want to remind people to move to the uh, next slide here. Go ahead and go to the ask a question tab down at the bottom of your screen and uh, put your questions there. We're going to go through those here very soon. And also in the chat column here, a lot of you are asking your questions, hit the plus button and uh, use the ask a question option. And we'll go ahead and dump it over there. Uh, another great feature as we move on is the rapid camp plus multiplex wiring system. And this really couldn't be easier to set up and use. Yeah, so we, we looked at a bunch of uh, different applications. So there, there's a lot of stuff out there in the market, uh, and a lot of it still is using more of the analog switching technology. And um, you know, we've had a lot of success in, in motorhomes that are considerably more expensive uh, than the V-Vans uh, with multiplex. And multiplex, more or less, is just taking all the wiring, having it go to a single hub. Um, and that hub uh, is up on the wall. 
Uh, it gives you all your information. It also has some analog connections. So this is an Android-based um, operating system. An Android-based operating system takes about 45 seconds to a minute to boot up when it first comes online. So um, the hard buttons that we have located um, actually um, allow you to um, turn on some lights uh, or put the awning out with hard buttons while the system boots up. And then once it boots up, um, you have the screen that you can control everything from, but you also have a phone app. And so you could be outside on your phone, on your tablet, doing whatever. You can turn the air conditioning on, you can turn your lights on, uh, which is kind of nice because you can have all the screens closed so you're not getting um, you know, bugs coming in and out of the coach. And you can turn those lights on or you can turn those lights off. Um, it's all right there, and it's uh, you know it's what most people would probably like to have in their homes, where you can just turn all the lights on and off. Uh, and here it is in, in a small van, um, but it does make a whole lot of sense and makes everything centrally hooked. Yeah, and the great thing, I mean, the app is real fast and easy to download. It's a it's a great addition to, uh, and I do. I wish I had a lot of these smart. I guess, VVAN features in my home. Uh, moving on here, uh, we do have a, a couple of different power options here. First, we'll talk about the uh, gas generator and the uh, glass map battery. So let's talk about this, then we'll move on to the optional lithium ion here. Yeah, so there, there's a there's two systems on the coach. So the standard system is a um, is a traditional gas power generator. It's a 2,800 watt um, generator. It's located in the rear of the vehicle. Uh, just behind the rear axle. So that's your standard power source. So that's going to run your air conditioner, your microwave, your lights, everything in the vehicle so you can be all self-contained off the grid. Um, we do have a couple of Group 31 um, AGM batteries. So they are larger. Uh, in a traditional Class C, we might use a Group 24 or a Group 27. We moved to a Group 31, obviously, because it's going to give you uh, more capacity. And obviously, the more capacity, uh, the better. Uh, the one, obviously, in this particular setup, if you don't run the generator, um, you can still run um, all your lights. You can still run um, all the 110-volt uh, outlets in there off the inverter that comes standard in the vehicle, uh, but you won't be able to run your air conditioner. So that is the uh, the one thing that takes more amperage than what the batteries can provide, uh, which is why um, we decided that we would offer um, the reliable package, which is our lithium-ion package, um, and we did that because, um, you know, it was popular out there in the market. There's a lot of people that want to talk about it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's systems out there. I mean, obviously, we have a, a really strong competitor out there that's using Volta system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of uh, people out there using uh, Lithionic system. Um, and the reason we chose Masterville, uh, first of all, is because uh, they have a track record over the last 10 years of more than 10,000 of their batteries in the market operating operating outside of their warranty period, operating in harsh environments and marine uh, and industrial construction is their, is their big thing. Um, they design um, all their own components. So they design the inverter, they design the batteries, the control panel. Um, really the only thing on this system, there's two things on the system that we'll talk about that are not designed by them. The first one right now is the alternator. Um, mm -hmm. That comes from um, Nation's alternator out of Pennsylvania and then the auto start system um, which uh, I don't remember the, the manufacturer, but that doesn't come from them. Uh, but very soon, uh, we hope that we actually uh, will be getting an alternator from them also because they do, that is something they do uh, in the marine side of the business. We chose Mastervolt for one simple reason it's 12 volt. Okay, mm -hmm. so everything in the RV business is 12 volt or 110 volt. Um, the automotive business has moved to a 48 um, volt um, system, uh, everything in their vehicle operates off of 48 volts. The difference is, is that in a motorhome, um, none of the other appliances work off of 48 volts. So everything has got to be a step down converter. So you're always converting something over. With a 12 volt system, we felt that the expertise at the dealership level, we felt that the, um, the overall um, person who is using the vehicle would understand exactly how 12 volt works. Whereas when we start getting into higher voltage and having to take and figure out why this didn't convert and why that didn't convert. Um, we just felt 12 volt was better. Well, let's um, explain how this system works um, to keep everything up and running because there are a couple of smart features on here to make sure that you always have the juice you need even when you are away from your coach. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, there's two batteries. Um, those two batteries are 5,500 watts each. So the overall system size capacity is 11,000 watts. Uh, which if you look out in the market, that will be the largest output um, in the market uh, across pretty much all competitors. It doesn't matter if you're talking Sprinters or Promasters or anything else. That's a big battery system. So 11,000 watts. 
Um, it's got a 3000 watt inverter and the inverter, the difference between this inverter that comes with the package versus the standard inverter is this inverter has enough output and is large enough to be able to control your roof air conditioner. So the, the battery wattage or the battery capacity as far as how many watts it has, then the inverter charger can go to the roof air conditioner. It can run your air conditioner. It can run your microwave. It can run all your lights. And like you said, Steve, it's smart there also because it does have the underhood generator, which is simply just a very high output alternator. Uh, this alternator puts out about 280 amps. And so we have it set up when you drive down the road and you're driving your vehicle, you're constantly charging your batteries. Um, and when you get over idle, you're going to be up in that 200, 250, 280 amp charge, which is putting a lot of juice back into the batteries. We have a smart start, which you can actually set it up to modulate. So if you want to leave the vehicle for a day or two and you want to make sure that you can run your air conditioner, you want to make sure your batteries stay charged, you can enable the smart start system. And when the batteries get down to approximately 30%, it will automatically start the engine of the vehicle, run the engine until the batteries are brought back up over 80%, and then it'll shut back down. And it will do it up to five times before you have to reset the system. So this way, if you're out and about and you want to ensure that um, you know something in your coach, um, especially if you have animals, that's a big thing is a lot of people like to bring their animals. Uh, you can be assured those animals aren't going to be in there, uh, you know, um, overheating and you know possibly having a negative effect. Uh, and there's some safety um, things on there also, Steve, that uh, you know it won't automatically start. Um, you know, if you engage it and the hood is open, or um, you know, if you if you don't have the vehicle in park, or if you hit the parking, if you let go of the parking brake, or you touch the service brake, so. It's got some intelligence that helps uh, ensure safety along with it. And you can get this across the board as an option on any of our floor plans, correct? That is correct. Every every Tolaro and Sequence floor plan has this available. All right. And as we move on to the next slide here, Tom, more to talk about. We'll get to your questions here very, very soon. Uh, go ahead, hit the Ask a Question tab. If there's something that somebody has already asked that you think, oh, I was going to ask this, go ahead and hit the Vote button, and then that'll kind of move that up in the queue. Uh, back to the Thule accessories, uh, for one of the photo shoots we did, we loaded this bike rack up. It really couldn't be easier to use. It's very secure, holds two bikes in. Um, it's really a great system to because i see a lot of people put uh, something on the hitch there which there's nothing wrong with that but with it integrated i mean you can't beat that no and, it, and it's easy and it's removable that's the other thing too okay. uh, this isn't one of those things that's permanently mounted to the vehicle mm -hmm. so uh the rails that hold it in place are permanently mounted but you can take it off so if you're somebody that is like i'm not bringing the bikes or i just don't have right. bikes that i want to deal with um take it off it's it's no big deal at all um it does have locks on it which is nice so you do have keys um, so if you do have your bike on there, uh, you know, you can lock the thing in place. And there you go. There's a good image of it right yeah. there where the lock it in place is secure. Uh, it's out of the way. And uh, like you said, it doesn't have to go in the hitch. So if you want to put a hitch connector or you wanted to tow something or you, you had a little U-Haul that you're going to bring with you, um, it doesn't take away from that. You still have the access to both. And it's up and out of the way. So when you are backing in, backing into a parking spot or whatever, it's not down at the bumper yeah. level where you could accidentally – uh, you know, hit the tires or hit the rack. All right. And as we move on, we have uh, this, I think, is a really neat option. Not only as the way it is stored, you can see over here to the left into the wet bath, but the way that it attaches to your vehicle. So walk us through the ladder here and why choosing this uh, was such a smart decision. Well, the ladder itself, first of all, is is movable. And uh, what we liked about this is the um, the bracket that holds it in place is magnetic. So the whole entire van is metal. So that bracket will stick anywhere you want to. And because that is a telescoping um, ladder, you can attach it there and, it, and it's got a couple of clips. So it's very secure. It's not one of those things where you put it on and you're worried about it um, sliding around or moving. Uh, and unless you pull that magnet and you try to um, kind of pull it off the top of the bottom, it's not going anywhere. It is definitely not gonna slide. Uh, if anybody's seen any of our videos in the past at open house or anything like that, um, you saw me up on top of there and, uh, you know, my 230 pound body um, moving side to side is not moving that at all. So believe me, if it holds me, it's going to hold just about anybody. And it, and it allows you to move anywhere you want. So it becomes convenient. So if you do want to put something on the roof rack or you do want to add an extra solar panel, you don't have to worry about that. You have to get a separate ladder to get up there because this will you know access anywhere on the van. 
And it's really easy to set up, folks. If you go back to our live broadcast we did when we were in Fontana, the uh, product manager, Mitch Johnson, and I had a Thule roof ladder, ladder race. Uh, he destroyed me in the amount of how quick it was to set up, but you can see just how fast it is to set up. Uh, and it's really convenient, easy to store. As we move on, another great Thule option here that you can control through the Rapid Camp Plus we talked about is this patio awning. And the neat thing, John, about this is you can mount this, the awning to either the ground or the side of the vehicle. So why did you decide to set it up this way instead of the traditional, it just goes out and you're done? Well, I think we found um, in our in our experience of just building motorhomes in general, um, that there are times where you want to have your awning up and you're not going to be there the whole entire time. So you want some extra stability. <clears throat> this is one of the things that um, as we compare uh, what Thule had to offer versus others, um, you know, you've got these um, on the front rail of the awning, you have these um, stabilizer bars that you more or less can uh, pop out of the front of the awning and they attach to the side of the vehicle. So um, what you can do here is you can kind of angle it. So um, if it rains, you can have all the water drain off to the back. The second thing is, is that it does add a considerable amount of stability. So if it does get windy or a windy gust comes up, you've got that. And they've even got a cool little gusset that actually goes, um, you can see on the one picture there, um, you know, if you don't know what you're looking for, you wouldn't even realize it's there. It's, it's that well hidden inside of it. Um, but when you look at that, you have that where you can uh, create that triangle there, which really creates a strong foundation, just like you would have if you had a triangle holding up a bridge. Uh, so you've got the triangle between the, the van and the awning and then the, the other triangle between the arm and the, the leading edge of the awning, uh, which just makes a really secure area. And moving on, we have... Easy exterior connections. I like how this is all set up. So everything, all your connections are on one side of the coach. This was a smart design, John. Yeah, I mean, so once again, it's, you know, it's in the camp area. This is a traditional campsite area uh, that we would have on, on most vehicles. But, you know, your sewer hose, your city water fill, your potable water fill, um, your holding tank connections, uh, the exhaust for the Truma system, the, uh, the, the connection for your LP and for your 110 volt plug in is all right there. And it's all compact, um, real easy to use. Uh, I know that uh, when my wife and I took this very first van that you see on there, uh, the first uh, road trip out to kind of give it its uh, shakedown after we designed mm -hmm. the vehicle. Uh, it couldn't have taken me more than five minutes to get everything set up. And the other thing that was really nice is um, we had a day where we were set up in the campground and within five minutes, uh, I had everything all packed back up, thrown in the coach so we could go do some day trip um, kind of along the uh, the coast of Lake Michigan. So it, uh, it really is uh, a really nice feature to be able to get in and out of campgrounds. Very nice. Yeah, it's uh, easy to use drive it's one of those where i would like uh, especially when we get into marching band season you talked about how it is easy it is to just be able to park it into a regular size spot and you can see here just the the size of this here i mean they're coming in at you know to around just under 21 feet you can park it in a regular spot you can go to your thing you can come back it's it's a great vehicle for that uh we talked about the window van and why that's important i know we have a lot of questions coming in about windows and openings and screens we're going to get to those in just a second go ahead uh Tom and take us through uh, the next slide. We talked about it being built on a, a window van here. And next slide, Tom, is uh, our Truma Combi heater and furnace. And this is a great hydronic heating, uh, water heating and furnace system. So kind of walk us through the choice on this and just how beneficial this is to have in your sequence or Tolero product. Well, I think as soon as somebody uses the vehicle in cold weather, they'll understand why we went with Truma. So Truma, uh, you know, they're a proven leader in the market. Um, you know, they're a German company. Uh, people over there use them all the time. And what it is, it's very small. It's very compact. It, uh, it uh, sips LP gas, so it can run for a long time. Um, there's all kinds of settings on it. But the biggest thing is it gives you nice heat distribution. All of the lines inside of the vehicle are all insulated and they're all more rigid lines. So it makes sure that we have good airflow throughout the vehicle. It also is super quiet. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things is that what most of the time you don't even know that it's on. Um, so whether you are using the heating function, if you're just using the fan function, um, there are little controller there that's off on your left side. Uh, there, there's more or less two, two settings you need to worry about. The first one will be uh, you know, your, your heating section and the second one is the water heater. And it's got three levels of water heating, which you can just go from an eco mode just to keep the water where it's not high usage. Um, you can go to uh, a, a hot mode where it, you've got higher usage and then you go to a boost mode. When you're gonna take a shower, you're gonna be using the water for 
longer than just a, a couple minutes, um, it can kind of work there. So that gives you the amount of gas it's using. So it's not burning gas any more than it needs to. Uh, you can set up timers. Um, there's really not much to winterizing and it's a single valve to winterize it. Um, I couldn't think of anything easier and probably better suited for this type of vehicle. Yeah, and folks, if you you have uh, one of these products, we have on our YouTube channel a walkthrough, and we'll talk about uh, how to access all of our customer service or walkthrough or how-to videos here at the end of this. One of the other things that uh, we've done in these, and I really appreciate this, is upgrading the dash electronics. I know there are other B vans on the market that have that standard RAM radio, which really is is very outdated. Uh, this was a great way to update to technology, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It does so many, has so many different features. Let's talk about working this in and some of the other features you have uh, in the engineering team worked in because the diagnostics I think is just an amazing thing to have at your fingertips as well. Yeah, I mean, I, when, we first, when we first started getting the vans in and they were in the raw state, uh, we drove them around a little bit, just kind of get a, a feel for it. And I just could not believe that in 2020, 2019, when we started this, 2020, people are gonna accept a five inch screen on their dash in a van where it's already probably eight to 10 inches further away from your head than what it would be in your normal automobile. And let's face it, my cell phone screen is bigger than the radio. And you want me to look at GPS or radio stations or anything like that on this tiny little radio. And I couldn't believe that people were actually using this. And then when we went and looked in the market, there's still a lot of competitors out there that don't change the radio out. And there's just no way that I could see myself using it. I mean, uh, I mean, most cars anymore. I mean, if you're not a seven inch, you're, I mean, you're you're starting off at a ten inch, and heck, you can get a new you know Ram pickup truck, which has got you know a twelve and a half or fifteen well, inch screen in. I mean, yeah. so um, we went this way, and it gave us a bunch of things. First of all, the screen's twenty eight percent larger than the factory screen. Um, you do have those. Um, options to use Apple CarPlay. So you can use your Waze or your Apple Maps or your Google Maps. So because this vehicle is smaller, you can drive it in the same place as you can a car. So why wouldn't you want car navigation? That's gonna be the best with real-time traffic and everything else. Uh, it fully integrates Sirius XM, so you've got that. You've got Bluetooth. Um, you've obviously got the um, hands-free feature and use the steering wheel controls. You've got the speaker phone. Um, and then also the big thing is, is it ties into the OBD2 port and by tying mm -hmm. into that, we can get things like, we can see exactly what our intake manifold pressure looks like. We can see our tire pressure monitoring. We can look at all of our uh, tripometer and everything like that. We can look at our instant fuel savings. Um, we can see um, a multitude of things on the screen that most of the time you'd be scrolling through that little, um, what I'll call somewhat antiquated dot matrix yeah. type looking display on the dash. Um, and, and instead you're gonna look at it like it is here. You know, it's, it's simple, it's easy to read. Uh, it's what you'd expect in a modern automobile. Yeah, it's really a great system. Uh, and as we move the other way, uh, Tom, uh, our sliding screen door, I think, is another great option here. So you can set up camp. You can put the screen in place, let the breeze through. This is a, this is a, a, a great idea to throw in there. Yeah, it's just it's just a little uh, you know pleated um, shade, uh, not pleated shade, but a uh, pleated screen. You can slide it across, keeps the bugs out. That's one of the big things. Uh, you know, having that remote control on your phone to be able to control things on the coach mm -hmm. is nice. So you can actually turn off the awning lights or turn off the interior lights, so the bugs kind of move away from your screen from the outside before you have to open it and all the bugs go flooding in mm -hmm. because you have you you can't get inside to turn off the lights. Uh, and then of course, um, you know, on the twenty A or the twenty eight T model. Uh, we do, I believe, have an additional screen on the back uh, because that area is set up a little bit different without the bathroom in the back. It's got more of the bathroom in the center. Um, so your sleeping area that's back in the back, you have another screen in the back where you can get uh, in and out through the back of the vehicle. So um, that particular floor plan has, uh, has that option. All right. And as we uh, move on, full length step with lights underneath. I mean, just another little touch to make access yeah. in and out easier. Correct. And it lights up the ground when you're going in and out so you can see the ground and it makes it easy. All right. As we move on here uh, on our A and our AT products, we have the sky bunk for overhead sleeping. These these pop top roofs, if you will, are wildly popular. Yeah, because, they get, you know, they, they allow the vehicle to be used for a couple different purposes. Um, you know, I was just on uh, an email chain this morning and I had a gentleman um, writing in just asking us some questions about um, B-bands, uh, specifically about a model that um, our sister company makes. 
-hmm. And he was talking a little bit about how um, he is a family of four. It's he and his wife and they have two children and they have two dogs. And they're looking specifically for something like the 28 floor plan that allows them to have their kids who could sleep up top. Mm -hmm. um, he and his wife can sleep on the bottom. And then of course the dogs can be in there too. So there's kind of plenty of room for, for everybody. And you know, this, this pop top is, uh, is uh, pretty easy to get to. It's got a ladder you can hop up into, you know, it's got canvas sides, it's got a fiberglass shell or a hard shell on the outside. So that's going to help with, uh, you know, making sure that you keep the noise down. It's going to also help. Um, there's a skylight up there in that pop top on the A and the AT models. Um, the, the ladder lets you up in there. You know, the ladder um, goes up through an opening in the roof and that opening in the roof is about two feet by about three and a half, almost four feet. So it's a good size to get in and out of. And then that bed that's up there uh, is about the size of a full bed. So it's uh, about 56 inches wide by about 78 inches long. So, uh, you know, it, it's a good size bed that uh, um, people can sleep in, whether you're adults or children. And then, of course, you know, when the, the weather's a little bit cooler, uh, you know, you're sitting on the beach, you're overlooking something, uh, open up those screens, open up those zippers. And, uh, you know, you're right there out with nature, uh, you know, on top of the van kind of looking out. Yeah. And you, I just want to mention, you had talked about, uh, in the email chain, traveling with pets. That's one of the other neat little features that we have in our products is they do have that, that pull out pet dish in mm -hmm. the, uh, in the Tularin sequence product, which is a neat ad. So as we move on, uh, uh, from the sky bunk, I know I was talking to uh, my youngest daughter. She says, I said, what is that? I saw it's a pop top. She's oh, can we get one of those? <laughs> so she'd love to stay, uh, stay in there. So let's talk about some of the different interior options here. Uh, this would be, uh, well, it was, we go back that would have been the, uh, uh, yeah, those are there. We go. There's just some of the different the different setups there. Uh, that think, is the K. I think maybe if we wanted to, Steve, since we're running about 35 minutes right now, why don't we let yeah. Tom just kind of run through run through put we'll some images some up in the back, and we'll start answering some questions because right. it seems like oh, we here got we a go. few. All right. Um, let's see. I guess we'll go with the first question here. It says, "Did you all add the Sumo Springs the way Winnebago did to their Tovato? Um, Steve, we have not. Um, you know, we, we've looked at that and um, we haven't come to a conclusion one way or another of whether we need to do that. I do know that in the aftermarket, adding the Sumo Springs is pretty simple uh, because mm -hmm. we have looked at those on other products. But no, at this point, we have not decided to add that to the uh, vehicle. All right. And uh, a couple of questions. Uh, same question here. This one will say Thomas sent this in. Are you going to change the windows that open in the sequins? Uh, we weren't planning on changing the windows. I do know that one of the things that has been talked about is can we get a little bit better seal as far as our um, uh, screen goes? Mm -hmm. So the windows open as far as the screen goes. So uh, on different floor plans, we either have um, two to three opening windows. And so um, we're, we plan to keep that many windows, but we are looking at all the hardware and the way that the screens attach to see if there is a way, because we do know that in some situations that the, the way that the window opens, there are little gaps at the top and the bottom that do allow bugs to come in. And we want to get that issue um, kind of behind us. Um, but we're working with our window manufacturer because um, each one of the, the windows is tooled um, to mm -hmm. fit a specific opening. So um, it's kind of a little bit longer lead time thing. Uh, and we already have kind of looked at the way that they attach and everything like that um, to try to make sure that they're attaching securely and that we can, uh, you know, keep the bugs out of the vehicle. All right. And Julia wants to know, when are they going to be readily available in coastal Carolinas? I believe they, they've been shipping for months now, so she may just have to contact her coach link, but they're available throughout the country, correct? Correct. Yeah, we've been shipping. Now, there's going to be more sequences in the market than Tolaro. Tolaro was introduced probably about four months after the sequence was. So there may not be as many Tolaros out in the market. Um, so if the Tolaro is, uh, if you're really digging the, um, the uh, Tolaro interior versus the sequence interior, um, yeah, I think if you would uh, get on our website and check out the, uh, the uh, look for dealers, you'll be able to find your closest dealer. Uh, and if not, um, uh, yeah, uh, on our website, go to the coach link. Uh, I know our coach link uh, um, people would love to talk to you about how they could get you in front of one of those uh, vehicles. All right. What about color options? Will there be more of them? Um, at this point, no. Um, at this point, those are um, the two options we have available. Uh, we will continually look at uh, the overall color selection. Uh, as Steve mentioned earlier, um, we're buying all the cabinetry out of Italy. And so we've got about a four month lead time as far as getting cabinetry in and out of the vehicle. Um, but if, if anybody has any suggestions about colors that we might want to look at, 
Uh, we'd love to have um, any feedback back that we can. And once again, if you uh, talk to our coach link operators, um, they will definitely take those notes and make sure they get back to our team in the product development side. And we have a question here asking about the sewer hose. It has the built-in sewer hose storage there. It says most hoses won't fit. Is this one intended for a specific manufacturer's product or what will work into the storage option we have on our B-Vans here? The, uh, the, the hose that you'll want to use is you'll want to use one that's got the um, connector for connecting to the coach on one side and is more or less doesn't have anything on the other side if you plan to use the, um, the tube that is in the side of the vehicle. Uh, that tube is about a four inch uh, diameter um, and it'll accept the hose up to about 10 feet long. Anything over 10 foot or anything that's extremely rigid uh, probably won't work. Um, I can, uh, I can uh, give some examples maybe after this, uh, maybe send something up on our, uh, on our post here uh, that maybe gives a link to something that we've purchased or the, the hoses that we purchased to put in these vehicles when we use them as demo or consumer vehicles. All right. Uh, Thomas wants to know about uh, spare tire options. Yeah, so we we uh, we don't offer anything um, from the factory. I do know that as far as a spare tire goes, I mean it's a it's a relatively um, easy to access um, spare tire. There is no room underneath the vehicle for a spare tire. That is pretty much uh, uh, going to be used for everything that's attached to the coach. So if a spare tire was wanted, uh, kind of the two options are either uh, carrying it up on the roof rack, um, or as what I see most people out there in the industry do is they put something. Um, either off the bumper with some kind of a bumper hitch um, or they do something that maybe attaches to the door. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have anything specific that I can talk about as far as an option goes, uh, but it is something we can do a little investigation on. And maybe if there's something out there that uh, people are using, we can kind of pass that on so people have uh, more information. All right. And a uh, question about uh, tilt steering. This is just uh, telescoping, correct? Uh, yes, the the, um, the steering wheel does not tilt. It simply just telescopes in and out. Um, that is a just a design characteristic from uh, Fiat Chrysler. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, a couple of questions about uh, we've talked about windows and screens, uh, seat belts. Let's talk. Uh, somebody wants to know. Howard wants to know how many seat belts are included. Can more be added? And I think Howard, that depends on on your floor plan on this number of seat belts. But John, I'll let you handle this. Yeah, I mean, actually, all floor plans have four seat belts currently. So okay. whether you're talking about your uh, your KKT, your AAT, or your LLT, um, they all have um, four seat belts. Um, we could not recommend adding any additional seat belts for uh, for two reasons. The first reason is is because um, of the overall capacity of the vehicle. Um, you know, there's a, these chassis are nine thousand three hundred fifty pound rated. So um, you know, continuing to add seat belts adds to that weight rating. Uh, which we cannot recommend. And the biggest reason we can't is because all of our seat belts go through seat belt testing. And so we do a pull test on every one of our seat belts to ensure that the safety of you and your family is um, held at the highest regard. And so um, whether you're talking about our side seat belts or you're talking about our forward facing seat belts, everyone, every one of them is tested and is uh, in compliance with the pull testing. And uh, anything added to the vehicle after that would not be, so we would definitely not recommend that. All right. And uh, I don't know. I'll ask. Uh, Sheldon wants to know the size of the bed in the K. I don't know if you have those dimensions off the top of your head or if we get back to Sheldon uh, in a little bit. Um, while we're answering these, let me uh, let me take a couple of looks and uh, let me see what I can find real quick. All right. We can do that. Um, and we'll go through and ask your questions. we got a lot of great questions here. Uh, we'll answer your question about the cassette toilet. That's one thing that we did not talk about. The uh, AT, the Tolaro 20 AT does come standard with the cassette toilet. Um, and how many gallons is that? Do you know? You know, I've got to look. I'm, For some looking, reason, I'm, I'm looking up here too. I was thinking it was six gallons, but I, I could be wrong, but I can find that relatively quickly while yeah. we're still here on the, on the call. So rolling through this as well. And we'll, we'll get back to that one and get that we'll one. Answered. That if one nothing else, we'll, yeah. we'll put it in the comment section um, under the questions um, once this yeah. is over to give you exacts. All right. Here's a here's a question uh, from Paul. If you have the loft, does anything from the roof that the other models have, is anything removed or is everything kept the same? That Do they all have the same bells and whistles? Yes. The, the biggest difference is, is that you go from a, uh, a solid uh, monocrystalline um, panel, which is your, um, your 
solar panel um, to the, um, the flexible panels. Those are up there. Um, also, um, Tom, you, you by chance still have a picture of that overhead shot that we had of the um, pop top um, that we took with the drone. I think that was one of the pictures we had in. There you go. Um, so you can see the other thing that is not on the top either is that the, um, the roof rack um, mm -hmm. is removed. So um, if you kind of look at the picture, you'll see your air conditioner in the back, you'll see your flexible solar panels, you'll see your wine guard connect, um, you'll see um, the different vents and everything. So all that's up there. So um, you would lose the ability for the roof rack and crossbars when you have the pop top on the 20A, 20AT. All right, I know we uh, addressed this a little earlier, but I'll combine a couple questions here. This one's from Howard and Len. It's about lithium ion. Uh, how long will the AC run off the lithium ion and what works with and without it? Um, so as far as how long it will run, um, that is um, a question uh, that really looks at demand. Uh, but I can tell you in our, in our testing that we have done, we did some testing um, with nothing installed in the van and no insulation in the van. So it would run nonstop, 100% compressor all the time, only shutting down. And we've got 10 plus hours of runtime in that, what I'm gonna call most extreme application. Now that was, we ran that test last July in Indiana. Uh, the temperature was in the low 90s and the humidity was probably, um, you know, in around that 50% mark. So it wasn't extremely humid, it was a little more arid. Um, so that kind of gives you that. We, we feel really confident that a complete overnight for at least a day, if not longer, uh, running the air conditioner, especially cycling on and off, is not going to be a problem. Um, we do have uh, a couple of vehicles that we are going to do some more testing on this summer um, to try to get a, we're just going to set this outside. We're going to try to get them in a higher humidity, higher temperature, all completed, running longer, and we'll be able to get those, that information back. But with that 11,000 watts, we feel really confident in even at an extremely high load that a 10 to 12 hour runtime is your minimum and anything besides that is going to be longer. Um, but it's really a it's a it's a individual use case on are you using the microwave or are you using the TVs? You know, uh, are you are you going in and out? Are you opening and closing the door? So um, use 10 hours as your base. All right. And a uh, great question here from Jeffrey. What is the advantage over the axis? The advantage over the axis. So um, a little bit apples and oranges because an axis is a traditional motorhome. It's got um, you know laminated sidewalls. It's got laminated uh, floors and roofs. Um, it's probably about a foot foot and a half wider than what the van is, and obviously it's a, it's a good three feet longer. So you're definitely talking about a vehicle that takes up more room. Um, the, the Axis um, offers slide out rooms. Uh, it's a little bit heavier gross vehicle weight rating. Um, you can obviously sleep more people, I would say comfortably inside of the vehicle. Um, it still falls into somewhat of that category of a small motor home um, that's easy to drive. And uh, uh, think of uh, the Axis kind of being a van that's on steroids a little bit. Everything got a little bit bigger, everything got a little bit heavier, and everything is a little bit um, wider to make it more usable. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're talking the van or if you're talking to any of our RUV lines, which might be the Compass, the Gemini, Vegas, or Axis. Those are vehicles intended uh, to be small, stay small, and to um, you know have people use them in in ways that uh, you know you can get off the grid, you can go places that you don't need um, special permits or anything like that. Or every national park can accept all those vehicles. Every state park will accept those vehicles, uh, and that's kind of what they're all intended for is that that buyer looking for a smaller vehicle. And a question from Joe is the pop top waterproof. Um, I would say that the pop top is highly water resistant. Um, you know, it's like any other tent material. Uh, if you uh, continually just um, soak and soak and soak the tent material with um, water, um, eventually it's going to start to pass through the membrane. Um, when the when the pop top is completely closed, yes, it's got an internal lip that actually seals the external the external lip. They overlap each other. So unless um, your van was um, up to the roof and six inches higher than the roof underwater, yes, it's waterproof in that application. Uh, but it's not waterproof in the Oakland application. Um, if it, you know, our recommendation would be is if you have a lot of rain, um, you're going to want to bring that down. Or if you have really really bad 
you know, side driving rain for more than, you know, an overnight, you're going to want to bring that down. Um, so you're not over, uh, you know, penetrating the material. And have a, a number of questions here. What changes will there be for the 2021 model year over the 2020? Uh, 2020 and 2021 are very much going to be the same. I mean, we we entered the market very late in the 2020 model year, and we're um, we're just kind of getting started into the uh, the 2021 model year in the next couple of months. And so, I expect there to be very minimal changes. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't really know of much of anything that's changed. We're kind of doing a carryover. Um, I got I got good information. I'm kind of going back to the previous questions. Uh, in the K, the bed is uh, 59 inches by 74 inches. So, uh, you know, that's going to be real close to being a, kind of a, a queen size bed. So lots of room there. Um, and then as far as the cassette toilet goes, uh, I was off by a gallon. It's actually five gallons. Okay. So I uh, got that information kind of beamed over to me um, from uh, Mike Snell, our national sales manager, who is extremely well versed in all of this. And believe me, he's going to be on the next one of these that we do, Steve. Okay. A uh, uh, question from John. Are the tanks heated? Yes, the tanks are heated. Um, so uh, you've got your black and your gray tanks that are heated. And then one other thing I'll mention is that if you do the lithium package, the lithium mm -hmm. package has its own set of heaters on the batteries. Uh, because as uh, people I'm, I'm sure know that are um, kind of familiar with lithium, you know, lithium doesn't perform when it gets to the freezing point. Um, lithium can take charge, but it won't discharge. And so we have um, gel heaters inside of each one of the battery boxes. And where the batteries are located, um, they're inside of uh, 16 gauge steel um, boxes that are located under the vehicle. <clears throat> so any kind of debris, road damage, anything like that, those batteries are completely protected. Um, and, uh, and with the heater that's inside, um, you won't have to worry about um, you know the battery's freezing and not be able to use your unit in the uh, in the colder climate all right and there's uh what is the Talaro going to be available in canada ontario soon yes uh the the Talaro and the sequence should be available um, across all provinces and all states in north america so uh if it's not right now it may be that we're just uh, looking to make sure that we have the right dealer in place uh, or it could be that uh, we're, we're kind of in the middle of getting dealerships set up and it just hasn't quite happened, but but definitely keep checking back with our website, uh, check with CoachLink people, they'll be able to get you in touch with uh, who the dealer is going to be in that area. All right. And this is a, a question from Brenda, and I guess Brenda will answer this because everybody right now is all kind of uh, locked down. Um, Brenda wants to know, when is the Thor service and parts department going to reopen? I believe we kind of have a skeleton crew in the parts, do we not? Uh, parts wise, yes. If you work through your dealer right now, we are shipping parts. Uh, we're at a, we're um, we're doing that on a daily basis. We've actually been doing that since uh, we've kind of been on the uh, the stay at home order. Uh, the biggest issue we run into right now is that uh, a lot of our component manufacturers are also um, either shut down or their employees are on furlough. So um, if it's uh, parts that have to be made uh, and we don't have them currently in stock, um, obviously we can't do anything with. We won't be able to help there. Um, but definitely have your dealer try to get a hold of us. All right. And uh, someone's asking about putting locking mechanisms on the drawers, cabinets, and medicine cabinets. Um, you know, there's that option out there. Um, we decided not to go with it because of the soft close hinges that we were using. Um, we, uh, we looked at um, the different things that were out there. We decided not to go with it because we thought there was enough closing uh, power. Um, but if that's something that, uh, that someone wants to add, uh, there are a number of things that would just connect to the back of the door and then the underside of the cabinet that would allow you to add those. Uh, if I can find information on some of the ones that we've looked at in the past, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, put it up here and uh, try to get that uh, question answered. All right. We got a couple more bed size questions. We'll get, uh, a lot of those to you. Um, here where I just was scrolling through. Uh, a lot of these, uh, what was somebody had asked, and I'm trying to find it. Yeah, Joe wants to know, is there enough headroom in the pop-top option to sit on the twin beds? And yeah, there is, um, Joe, when I'm in there with, uh, and, and this is one thing to keep in mind, a lot of people ask about how much room is there when we're out shooting the videos on this. Remember, uh, you have myself and Tom, uh, I'm about six foot one. We have uh, typically two or three lights we have a tripod and camera. Uh, we have some motion uh, controller as well. So we really have a full on production 
house set up in there and we still have plenty of room to move around. Obviously, some of the if you're looking at the uh, video here where you see where the pedestal tables pop up, you know, yeah, it's a little bit tighter in there. But you got to remember, this is a van. But, yeah, there's plenty of room for us to move around and, and get everything we did. So that's one of the things, John, uh, I think. And you're looking back here. We we maximized living space and we've maximized storage space when it comes to building these. But I think, Steve, to kind of follow up to um, as I was kind of looking um, at that question, um, when in the pop top option itself, mm -hmm. um, I do know that when you get inside the pop top, uh, obviously it's taller at the front than it is at the rear because it's got a slope on the roof. Right. And so, yes, I have been up in the pop top. And if you kind of sit there as you're letting your, your legs kind of hang down to get back on the ladder. Um, yes, I'm able to sit up um, Indian style or cross legged. Sorry if I've offended anybody, but cross-legged up there, crisscross applesauce, I think. There you go, crisscross applesauce. Um, I can sit up there um, without a problem, without hitting my head. Now, I'm not gonna have a ton of room. If you're six foot five, you're definitely not gonna be able to do that. Um, but if, you know, if you're six foot or below, I think uh, you won't have a problem. Uh, and then as you move back to the back, um, I would say you're probably in that uh, maybe 18 inches tall at the very back there, back behind that sleeping bag. Uh, and then it continues to go up. Um, I would say probably in that uh, three to four foot range up at the front. So uh, pretty, pretty easy to sit there and kind of look out the front. All right. And Michael wants to know, are these available in all wheel drive or in four wheel drive? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, the ProMaster does not offer that. They're kind of their Their thought is uh, it's in a, a two wheel drive version, which is front wheel drive. Um, there are other you know things out there in the market that uh, uh, obviously you may have seen the Ford Transit is now available in an all wheel drive version. You've got sprinters that are available in the four wheel drive version. Uh, and the one thing I can say is that uh, um, you know the van market is uh, is something that we definitely believe in. We think it is a growing segment. We think it's going to continue to grow for a while. And uh, don't anybody out there think that uh, these two vans are going to be the only offerings you're going to see from Thor Motor Coach. Um, we are going to be in this market and we are going to be the leaders in this market. And we're not going to just be in one segment or the other. So as, uh, as, as you start thinking about um, vans and you start thinking about uh, maybe if this ProMaster isn't exactly what you're looking for right now, um, continue to check back with us because I guarantee our product development team uh, is in full stride now looking at all the offerings in this market, not just one. Yeah, we believe we have the the, the, the best built product uh, at the best price, and we'll leave it there, John. If people want more information on B vans, there is at the bottom of your screen, underneath the photo you're seeing of the AT right there. Click on Thor Motor Coach B vans. That'll open up a tab directly on our website to the uh, sequence and tower. You can go through all the spec uh, specifications, all the all the specs and all the features there, uh, and compare and contrast. If you have other questions, if you want to know how you can locate a dealer, or you want to talk specifics. Go ahead and uh, talk to our CoachLink sales advisor because that team is always on it, always there ready to help, and we'll get you the information that you need. Uh, a lot of these other questions we'll go back through and we will comment. And if you have friends who would be interested in seeing this, we are going to post this a little bit later across our social media channels. I also invite you to go to our YouTube channel where we have a number of videos on how to use these. If you are a current B-Van owner and you have questions on the Truma system, we can um, actually show you, walk you through step-by-step -step on how to use that. Um, on the uh, Rapid Camp Plus, we can show you how to use that as well. So uh, a lot of resources out there for you. So please take a look at our YouTube channel, subscribe across the social media platforms. And again, we appreciate you watching. We do have a poll uh, that would love for you to take. Um, uh, and go ahead, hit the poll and answer that. We would love to uh, get your feedback on this. And perhaps, John, we can do a few more of these in the future as everybody is sort of quarantined and working from home these days. Steve, absolutely. And if you, and, you know, I'm going to go out of order here because I'm just going to go fast because yeah. I want I want people to yeah. ask questions. Like a couple things. So there's a couple things. So we had a question from Sharon asking if there yeah. is a button to turn on the generator, uh, and the answer is there's not one at the dash. But obviously, with the phone app that you would have for the multiplex, the answer is yes. You can just do it from your yeah. phone right there and start the generator. Okay. Um, the mattress in the pop top um, is about uh, two to three inches thick. So um, it's got a Frioli system underneath the mattress. So you've got an air kind of spring system underneath the mattress and then the mattress on top of it. Um, 
As far as um, with the um, lithium package, everything inside the coach works off of the lithium. If you have the standard inverter, which comes with the standard battery, standard generator setup, um, you're gonna have all your screens, your USB ports, um, that will all work. Um, but um, your uh, microwave and air conditioner will need the generator to run uh, in order to make those work. So those will not work off of just the batteries. Um, let's see here, is there anything else here? Um, in the Tolaro, the twin beds look higher than the sequence. Uh, the, the twin beds in the 20L um, sequence for the 20LT Tolaro are identical in height. There's nothing different there. If you were looking at the 20AT model, however, in the Tolaro, um, it would be taller than the 20A model in the sequence. So floor plan to floor plan, they're gonna match, but if you take one floor plan with a bed in the back versus a different floor plan, they could be a little bit different. All right. Uh, anything else in there you see you want to get out there? Um, I'm sure there is. And uh, I apologize for anybody that I could not uh, get to. I didn't hear any answers to earlier questions on power inverters. Is it made to be able to utilize an inverter? Um, it does have an inverter. So the standard inverter is a 1000 watt inverter. And then obviously when you go to the lithium package, um, uh, there is a larger inverter, 3000 watt inverter. Um, as far as the Goal Zero Yeti power bank to run the house power off the grid, um, I'm not educated in that particular product, so I can't really answer that. But uh, if you can, if it's something that you can use that power bank to plug into the uh, the power connector on the outside of the coach, then yes, I would think that would work. All right. And when you go to our website by clicking that tab down below, folks, you can see here, uh, you can pull up the different floor plans. Uh, those will come up. You can also uh, just hit the features and uh, everything, uh, all the tabs will open there depending on what you want to see. Everything is right there at your fingertips. So it's a great resource for you. And here's the sales advisor tab that I was talking about. Connect with our coach link team. You just uh, simply fill that out and we'll get that for you. Locating a dealer. We had a couple of questions there. You can click the locate a dealer tab and fill out that information there. And it's just as easy as that. So a lot of great resources for you at your fingertips. Yeah, so I think uh, I think other than that, I think there's some other good suggestions on there where uh, you know, there's a few people that have volunteered that maybe they can give us some feedback on things that mm -hmm. they would like to see. We'd love that. So um, yeah. I'd love to find a way that maybe we can make that work and maybe a little bit different uh, scenario where um, you know maybe we can get some of those uh, questions and answers that we can go back out and talk about a little bit and maybe use that kind of more of a product planning type thing. So um, something to look forward in the future. Yeah. And what's one of the things uh, you mentioned is, uh, you know, we did some of the product research here and it is important for uh, you folks watching that we do. We do take the feedback from everybody and we do incorporate what we can into our products. Since you folks are the end user, we enjoy hearing what you think in your feedback. So, All yeah, right. so I, I definitely want to say thank you to everybody yeah. that uh, hopped on today. Um, uh, yes, I'm the guy that doesn't know how to send an email correctly. So if anybody is uh, wondering about that, so yeah, I'm, the, I'm the guy that doesn't know how to send an email. So this is what happens when you uh, furlough your uh, whole entire marketing team and you decide you're going to try something new. So for anybody out there, you know, that, 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 that was the first and the last time that will ever happen. Yeah. So we do appreciate you all being with us. We appreciate your questions. Again, if you'd like to watch the replay, what's neat about this on the replay is you can go through the question tabs and where it says it'll be time stamped. And so you can go straight to there on the timestamp. So we appreciate you being with us, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will hopefully see you with one of these again real soon. If you have some products that you would love to see us talk about, go ahead and leave that in the comments and we'll see what we can do for you. John, you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Steve. You too. All right. And we'll see everybody next time.